And welcome back to Janky AF and Year of the Aerostar, episode 33. Well, we have another fine Aerostar for you today. Um, this one, again, just like the last one, has been on my radar for some time now. And, uh, you know, these fancy Aerostars are something of note. Um, well, they're all noteworthy, but something really, really jumps out and grabs my attention. I want to focus on that one immediately, um, just in case it gets sold. This one has been hanging out for a long time and uh, we've never talked about it so I thought we should talk about it today and uh, coincidentally I already had my blue shirt on so it was a little bit more convenient to just keep my blue shirt on and that is a good lead-in to you all to, to give you a little hint or preview of what this is going to be so we have a 1993 Ford Aerostar window minivan listed in Alta Vista Virginia for just $2,000. That's a nice name, isn't it? Alta Vista. Uh, I believe that was a, a search engine or a browser back in the day, was it not? Now, I think there are maybe several Alta Vistas, but this one happens to be in Virginia. So, uh, I noticed this one. The price has gone down quite a bit since they were first selling it, and uh, I don't remember exactly what it was, but let's say it's on the, uh, the clearance rack or the bargain shelf right now uh, about this vehicle, driven 99,999 miles. If that's the true mileage, that's quite amazing, and you could be the person to take it over 100,000. Automatic transmission, exterior blue, interior gray, fuel type is gasoline. Now they have this miles per gallon, which I believe, you know, is um, sort of put in by the algorithm, but 17 city, 23 highway for 19 combined. That sounds about right. I think Aerostars probably get around 20 miles to the gallon in, in the real world. It says it's a one owner, and it is paid off. Description, this is a doozy project van okay um, and just by the pictures kind of looking at it you can tell it may indeed uh, be a project van we see the rear bumper is entire, entirely missing here we'll take a nice look at that um, so we are current working on fixing it up to sell as a work or family van i'm sure they mean currently but uh, that's okay the engine has been recently rebuilt and the transmission is new as well so a lot of work gone into it right off the bat body has around 110k we think and the engine was rebuilt 100k miles at 100k miles i'm guessing and transmission transmission was replaced at the same time as the engine it's a good running van just not so aesthetically pleasing well i of course beg to differ on that one i think aerostars are you could drop them off a cliff and they'd still be aesthetically pleasing to me once we finish with it <laughs> the only issue will be the windshield it's broke and the metal is a little bent pretty easy fix but we don't have the tools for it okay so you can see it's a project feel free to message with questions or offers if someone offers to buy it as is i'm willing to lower the price also forgot to mention we have all the seats front and rear we just took them out to clean the carpet well that was nice i appreciate that. that's a lot a lot of effort's gone into this van you know um, i don't know if they were trying to flip it or if they just real mechanically inclined they want to take on a project but boy i mean an engine rebuild and a new transmission right there that's uh you know probably worth the price of entry at two thousand dollars now your windshield and, and i don't know if they said the metal is bent that sounds like a little bit of a hairy operation but you know maybe you could buy it get get it insured and then uh you know once it's got coverage you could you know pull the whole uh, i hit a deer situation you know um <laughs> i should tell this story very briefly as an aside a good friend of mine and shout out to uh shiftacular had a, a great green chevy blazer growing up when we were in high school I believe they hit a, a patch of ice or something and swung around the vehicle and uh, the rear hatch of the vehicle was damaged or broken. So they, they, you know, went end ass in into a tree or something like that. And they claimed to the insurance company that they, <laughs> they hit a deer, so that a deer somehow came up behind them and jumped into the back of the vehicle directly into the back not the side but directly into the back glass of the vehicle and broke it <laughs> and i believe the, the the claim went through somehow i believe they got it fixed so that was just an aside neither here nor there um update 32422 
Shown by the updated pictures, the inside has been cleaned up a bit, showing how the floor is going to look once we install the hardwood, currently fixing the radio wiring and brainstorming a fix for the roof lining. Well, good luck with that. I've had to deal with quite a few headliners recently, and they are not my uh, favorite thing to do. I, in my 1995 LeSabre, I was quoted $400 to replace the headliner, which I, I, you know, in all things being equal, I probably should have just bit the bullet and paid that, but I decided to try to create a duct tape headliner, which failed, and then I tried to rip out just the, the outer cloth. I ended up getting into the you know, this almost like fiberglass type insulation, very itchy, pain in the butt to take out. I took all that out, but it wasn't coming out evenly. So then I ended up just ripping the whole thing out and now it's bare metal. And if you see the bare metal roof of a car, especially from the 90s, there's all sorts of weird like caulking and a lot of surface rust inexplicably. I don't know how much moisture was getting in there. Anyways, I got to sand it down and paint it and all that, but you can check all the Buick content out on JNKAF if you'd like. So, I imagine that you would have to brainstorm a lot if you wanted to come up for an alternative solution for a headliner. But something about headliners just kind of grinds my gears because I feel like they fail so often that it's something that the automotive industry needs to find a better solution for. Now, in my 2002 Jetta, which you can also check out on Janky AF, I ended up, it was a little easier. I took all the, you know, the, the cloth and the foam and stuff, and there's just this nice sort of like plastic shell. Really cool how they just stamp it in one piece, and it has all the covers for the lights and whatnot, and, I, and that was kind of a, a bear to take out. But once I got it out, it was just like a nice one-piece simple shell. So I've gone ahead and painted that, and that'll be coming soon to Janky AF. Um, but that's kind of cool because then it has a nice finish. You can do it any color you want, and you never have to worry about that fabric dripping back down. And also, I find it very difficult to put the fabric in just sort of way, so it so it you know doesn't have any like loose sections in it, and it creases perfectly. You know, if you have some sort of like vacuum tool, I'd imagine at the factory it'd be easier. But anyways, I empathize with the headliner condition. So let's get into some photos. First thing we'll notice, I do like this dark blue color quite a bit. Um, it's a, it's sort of like the utility Aerostar, you know, your fleet Aerostar color, but it has this lovely white uh, dual pinstripe going down the side here, which I think is very, very tasteful. I also love, now I can't tell if these are hubcaps or, or alloy wheels. I believe they're hubcaps, but they look very similar to alloy wheels. Um, and I love that you can't even really see much of the wheel under it. They do a good job at sort of hiding that and they almost look metal. They just have that metal sheen to them. Um, these are some of my favorite hubcaps that went on any Aerostar. I think they're um, some of the best. I think in the later Aerostars, they went to like that simpler slicer style and they just looked a little bit cheaper. But a very, very nice hubcap with your blue oval in the middle. I think it's a, a great, great look here. Moving on. And I, I do, I, I say, I, they made a factory alloy wheel that did look like this. So if you're, you know, privy to this, let me know in the comments, because I don't really see much of the steel wheel under here. Now, maybe it, maybe it is under there, right there. Um, but I have to do a little bit more research into that. Not a lot of different steel wheel offerings, or uh, I'm sorry, alloy offerings on Aerostars. Um, but they did make factory alloy wheels, and, and they're quite nice. Not, um, not my favorite wheels of all time. Um, I almost prefer the hubcaps for some sort of strange reason, um, but neither here nor there. So here we have your engine bay. Um, now it doesn't say whether it's the three or four liter, but it, it kind of appears to be the three liter from my very um, not professional eyes. And it would just be most likely, especially if it's the rear wheel drive and it doesn't say it's all wheel drive. Um, you know, it's, uh, there's some stuff going on under there. It looks like a fairly recent battery. All right, so this is obviously in a covered carport, which is nice, and you can see the lack of a windshield designating it as a project car. You can also see the headliner ripped out there, and it looks like most of the interior paneling has been generally ripped out there. So it looks like they are kind of turned this into some sort of camper vehicle, and they talked about that with the hardwood floors. Um, and that's probably a good bet, too, just for your target audience. Um, most, someone most likely will use this as a, um, as a cargo or overlanding type vehicle. If I had to guess. Now this is pretty great. You have Billy Craft Honda. I'm not sure why that's on an Aerostar and I'm also not sure why it is upside down. <laughs> but I kind of like it. I would probably leave it if I bought the car just because it's, you know, it's always nice to carry on the legacy of the previous owners in your car and keep that continuity of narrative going. So I would probably leave that on. I do absolutely love these 
uh, blue bumpers. They have quite a bit of gloss to them. Of course, body match bumpers I love on an Aerostar, and they have this sort of metal stripping that I was talking about in my last video that I, I believe was on earlier Aerostars, but I haven't really been able to find any true consistency on if that's true or not. It's really too bad that the rear one isn't on there because this would look absolutely beaming with a, a full extended length blue uh, gloss bumper with your little chrome inserts here. 93, of course, a very good year for Aerostars. I happen to have a 1993 Aerostar, one of my favorite years. Just sort of like the number. Oh, it looks like, you know, I never noticed this before. Now, it looks like they've ta taken one of the sliding doors off because it has a fairly sizable dent in it, and they've put on a red sliding door. So that's awesome. I love mismatched body panels on cars. It's like peak janky. And the funny thing is, like with these Volkswagen Harlequins, they actually did that. Now it's become almost like a trope to have like these, you know, obviously they have very specific colors and very specific body panels, but I've always loved mismatched body panels because it's kind of cool because it's like, just the fact that, yeah, to remove all these dents and stuff, it's easier just to get a new door. And, and something about the clean lines and how they're broken up, and you get like sort of an idea of multiple colors that were offered for that year of the particular vehicle. I don't know, I just love it. I love everything about it. Plus, you can tell that the vehicle's been sort of continued on or cared for. Like, you know, this vehicle, all that was wrong with it. Most people would scrap a vehicle like this. So I love that someone is fixing this vehicle up and is, uh, you know, trying to do right by it and trying to... Um, you know, keep it going, keep it on the road. So I love this <laughs> bright red door on this blue body. It's just perfect. And also it's like, it's like a moving piece too. So you get to see it sort of in action uh, on the Aerostar dancing around there and uh, weaving in with the other colors. Really, really like that. You can see this like, like wood uh, flooring that's gone in here. It sounds like they're just putting it in just to show what it will look like. And maybe that's not totally finished. I also love the wide angle lens. Really, um, you know, impressed by these pictures, appreciate that. There we have it. Um, so you have this, yeah, like sort of pergo flooring that looks like they're gonna lay in there over the carpet. Um, it's cleaned up a bit. It looks like the left side body panels, interior body moldings and all that are fairly intact. Looks like it, was that a blue steering wheel on there? I wonder if that's replacement or if it's just a little stained or something, but there otherwise looks like a gray interior. Have a very funky sort of like wood panel going on down here um, and maybe some auxiliary custom gauges or something like that. They're probably messing with the wiring for the radio, I'm guessing. Crank windows, which is kind of cool. Um, that's like a nice feature in, in Aerostars. And, it, and this was back in the time, like my 93 Aerostar is a sport edition. And you'd think that's kind of like sort of an upscale package or at least some sort of package that someone would specify. And yet it has crank windows. And I really like that. Um, now, actually in the true spirit of a sports car, crank windows are sort of probably better because just in case you drive the vehicle off of a pier um, you, you don't have to worry about the electronics working and also I just feel like it's saving weight over a motor and a, you know all that jazz in there the extra wiring so a crank window is rather sporty if you think about it in that regard and I, and I love that um, this has the crank windows in it very very nice Again, more pictures of the interior. You can see the door being taken off. I, I really just, I love that someone took this thing and that they're going through the trouble of getting it roadworthy again. It, it really, you know, just, uh, it's very touching to see someone put this much effort into an Aerostar. And hopefully someone will buy it and, and continue along the way. Now you do see some, some crimped uh, metal here um, and perhaps it needs a little bit of um, grinding or something of that nature before it gets the windshield installed but you know for someone that knows what they're doing it seems like windshields actually aren't that difficult to put in if you, you know if you're a professional you know what you're doing for like a lay person like myself it's like well, that's a big piece of glass to try to lay in perfectly and how do you seal it and all that but if that's the only thing you got to do not bad now it does look like it will need a wiper eventually uh, in this cowl and the cowl seems to be a little bit raised over the edge here so you'd have to kind of get that fit back in there it's janky for sure no doubt about it and i love this sort of uh i love this shot this dirt sort of just you know residing on it and uh offering quite a nice natural patina boy what a beauty i always enjoy picking a picture to do my little uh behind the scenes here to do my uh, thumbnails for these images and this is going to be a really hard one to pick, take a picture of and, and do the you know choose from because this is obviously very very great but then I really like this shot too and a lot of times you'll see I mirror image them so I might have to use this one just because it's so cool but then again I, the aspect ratio needs to line up so we shall see you'll see when you see it on your 
uh, YouTube feed if you uh, subscribe to Janky AF. And please do subscribe. I never say it, but um, we love getting new subscribers. And it, obviously with algorithms and all these computers that control our lives now, it's just nice to have a human subscriber, you know, sign on to the Aerostar Brigade and uh, here at Janky AF and uh, all the subscribers and all the comments we've gotten. Really, really, Janky, do thank you. Really appreciate it. You know, it's so fun to talk with other people about Aerostars because like it or not, it is sort of like a niche market, um, ironically, because it was such a mass produced vehicle. So anyways, Janky, do thank you to all of you out there. There you have it. Um, a project for sure. Um, but, you know, someone's taken a lot of time and energy making this thing, getting it to the level it's at now. And, and hopefully they can find someone to continue it on or they can finish it and sell it or, or keep it for themselves. You know, but either way, it seems like it's had enough put into it that it's crossed that momentum threshold that hopefully it will be back on the road one day. And, uh, you know, we can only hope another Aerostar cruising on the roads, you know, a spaceship for the for the ground. And um, that's just one of the reasons why we love them so much. So there you have it. Uh, this has been Year of the Aerostar on Janky AF. Thank you so much for watching. And until next time. Janky do thanky.